Greetings from the America Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips, and today's project is a beautiful broken arch wall cabinet made out of walnut and hard maple with art glass accent. Stay around, this is a gem. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. Once in a blue moon, a piece of furniture just speaks to me, and this is that piece. It's a wall cabinet, always designed for that. And it has a broken arch with a turned finial. We'll do that out of hard maple. The rest of this will be walnut for the trim on the doors. And the gem on this piece will be this art glass. Now that's stained glass that's been soldered up. And since this is the key to this entire piece of furniture that will go below the arch pediment and above the doors, we need to know how to make this. There's a lady who has this mastered. Time for a road trip. We're in one of the coolest places on earth. It's Cloud9 Creations, Lisa Sager. And she's the lady who created the artwork that we're using on top of the cabinet today. Now, Lisa, we need your tips, your secrets. How do you first cut glass? Well, the first step is to trace the pattern on the glass. And for this glass that I'm using, it is clear enough that I can see through it, so I don't need my light box. If I was using an opaque glass, then I would take this back to the light box and trace it. Okay. So I'm going to trace my design onto the glass. So once I have my design on my glass, the first mm -hmm. step is to score the glass. Okay. And I like to do the hardest score first, the most difficult one, to get that out of the way. So I'm going to do this inside curve. Okay. And all you do is you get your scoring tool on there. This has a little uh, carbide wheel that rolls and it will, with enough pressure, actually score the glass. You can hear it. You'll hear what I call a zipper sound. Okay. Now, you take a pair of running pliers, and this has a little line on it that you want to line up with that score that you just made in the glass. Wow. The edges of the glass are still very sharp, and in order for us to get the foil to stick to it, we need to buff up those edges and get any little peaks buffed mm -hmm. down. So we use a grinder and the grinder has a little wheel on it that is just coated with diamond chips and that diamond chip, those diamond chips are what um, will buff that out so that the foil will stick. Okay, so after it's ground and it's smooth, it's on to foiling. Let's take a look at that. Now Lisa, we know how to cut glass and grind it. Okay, what's the next step here? The next step in the uh, foil technique is to actually apply a foil tape all, on all of your edges of your glass. The foil is actually lined up in this little wheel, mm -hmm. and if I have it lined up right... On the center, right, yes, of the you foil. Yes, you want the same amount of foil on the front and the back. Right. And then you're just going to push it through, the, and as you move the piece along, the wheel turns and applies the foil mm -hmm. exactly where it needs to be. And so we're going to apply a little bit of flux. And the flux, again, is just an acid that is used to make the solder flow and stick to your foil tape. Gotcha. What we do first is just uh, solder tack. So we're going to melt a little bit of solder in some tr strategic places to hold the piece in. And then we'll just go ahead and apply the solder. Very and you simple. see that it, it did kind of bleed through here. There's just a little bit of a gap, and a little bit too much heat made that solder flow all the way through. So you have to let it cool a little bit, and then come back and apply more solder. Now there is a repair nicely done. You do it all with glass. It's fantastic. And I can't thank you enough for the piece that we're using today on the American Wood Shop. It's a masterpiece. So if you want to master artwork in glass, 
Lisa, you're here in Covington, Ohio, and the name again of your company? Cloud9 Creations. Thank you so much. Now, let's go finish that project. A couple tips before we cut wood. Make sure the textured side of the glass on this art glass is out, not in. Because if it was in, well, you'd lose a lot of the effect. So I'll set that aside. And a word about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use. Safety glasses, and these are prescription safety glasses. Hearing protection, that's a must. And now, let's dig into this. The key to this project is this beaded face frame right here. That's a bead that goes along the inside edge. And we use that to trim out the stained glass. And we also cut out two beautiful walnut panels. And this has crotch figure in it. I used a drywall square to lay out a panel that's 14 across and 35 inches long. And this was band milled for me a long time ago, so it's bone dry. Now we'll just cut this square, and then I'll show you how to make the beaded face frame. Be sure to use dust collection with your band saw. In fact, all your tools. Just leave the line. So, here you can see a mock-up that I've laid out, and see these walnut styles and rails? Well, I need a total of 12 work pieces, and the first thing I did at the planer was I planed it down to a finished thickness of 13 sixteenths. Just took my time. For the door work pieces, I'm going to use two and a half inch wide styles that are 38 and a half inches long and then the rails are 14 inches long and two inches wide. For the stained glass, everything's two inches wide and the dimensions just match the glass frame. And I take those work pieces and you can see that here are the two door assemblies. They're identical, left and right. And green, boy, it's gonna be beautiful. And then the stained glass is trimmed out with this beaded face frame. Now before I can beat it, I have to cut everything to the finished length, in this case, the rail, like a rung on the ladder, going into the style, which is the long vertical. And so the rails are 14 inches long, up against the stop, locked in place. Make that cut with dust collection. Let that blade come to a stop. Very good. And that is a perfect cut, square every time with that system. And I'll show you how to notch that in just a second. Just a few more rail or style cuts, and we're in business up against that stop, flat to the fence. From here, it's over to the router table. <laughs> to make the door frame assemblies, we take the long running styles and we notch it like this. And here's how I do that with a router table with a notching bit. This is securely clamped. Turn the router on. Make the first cut. Take your time. Turn it off. Do not adjust the workpiece until that bit comes to a stop. And then what I can do is ease it on over and take, a, after it's been locked, another pass. Let that bit come to a stop, and as it does, you can see this rail that has the corner knocked off. Set that down, and what that does now with that two and a half inch wide rail stubs into that corner. And I'll do that for all the door frame assemblies. Once it's all notched, I'll show you one quick thing with this stop. Slide it over to the index mark that was on my test piece. Let me show you how I take those small corners off, just like this. And it's really important to hold this hand pressure down so this workpiece stays level to the surface of the table. And that's all there is to creating 
the beautiful notches. Now let's go get set up to do the beading on these notches. Now I take the best face of the stiles and rails, put it up against the fence. I use feather boards in front and behind the bit, and that's a beading bit right there. And the fence is locked in place. Now watch what happens. That is a beautiful decorative bead. Now I'll bead all the material just like that, and then I'll put a quarter inch fluted bit in. I have the work pieces notched and beaded, and also in the very middle, I have a quarter inch groove that's a quarter inch deep, and I did that at a router table in two passes. Don't try to take it all in one pass, too hard on the bit. So once that groove is done, you can see that this is all joined together. Pocket holes in the long rail workpiece that holds the glass. Remember, the rails are like rungs on a ladder. And the styles are the verticals, okay? So here I'm taking the four rails that go to the two doors that will have the wood panels, and I'm cutting pocket holes using this bench top tool. I ease it up against the fence and against the stop. This is a hold down. and it drills it perfectly every time. I'll do the other hold to the other hold down, hold it square to the fence, and that's how I make all the pocket joints that I need. Fabulous tool on all the rails. I'll get that done, and then we can assemble things. This is shaping up. On to assembly. Now, the best face is down, the pockets are up. And I like to use an eighth inch drill bit, nice and long, to create an interface between the pocket hole side of the joint and the style side of the joint in this case. And what I did was I just inserted that slightly warped solid wood panel, and that is how it all comes together. That's actually the flame figure that's going to sand out beautifully. So that's one door. I'll get on to the other door, same idea. And I like to create an L here where I join two pieces together. A quick action clamp just to hold it in place, flush to the surface like that. And you don't have to drill the holes if it's a medium density hardwood like walnut, but you do want to use the right inch and a quarter long a uh, fine threaded screw. You don't want to use a coarse screw here. So just join it all together and do the same with the top glass as well. Okay, be sure to set that clutch on the drill so you don't strip out the threads on the screws. That's the back. This is the front. And brother, that looks good. Now that gives us the dimension for the case over to the table saw to build the case. This is the key to the case. It's a piece of plywood, 51 and 7 eighths long, and I'll mill this down, keeping my eye on that locked rip fence, keeping that bottom edge, that straight square edge, against that fence. And first I'll cut it to length, carefully, and then to width. From there, I'll cut four pieces of maple. Take your time. For more tips behind the American Woodshop, go to the American Woodshop website, which is wbgu.org slash American Woodshop. And be sure to like us on Facebook. Now I'm drilling three pocket holes that will hold the stained glass frame to the top of the case. And you can also see on the very end, I've drilled pocket holes as well. And on this back edge is a long running rabbit that mates to the plywood back. 
And what this does now is it comes up and goes on, rabbit against the plywood. So this is the back, best grain in. And what I'm doing now is butting this maple sideboard to this top trim piece of walnut, making sure that it's spaced an inch and an eighth from the edge. And that looks really good right there. And I can bring up what's called a right angle clamp. And I clamp that into position so that, checking my witness marks, it stays exactly where it needs to be. Technical tap. Just one more over. That's perfect right there. And now what I can do is square up this side, this maple side, like that, and just screw it all together. And I do this for the other side as well. And you want an inch and a half long screws here on this thicker material. And put the top on. Now I'm putting the bottom on exactly the same way as I put the top on. And let me swing this around. You can see that that's the top right there. And what I'll do is lift this up and off of that plywood backer. And now what I can do is bring up the transom light. Boy, that's beautiful. And put the frame right up against this top edge right here and make sure it's flush on both sides, and it is. And then I just use inch and a quarter long screws to join it all together. The stained glass is now joined to the maple sides, and what I need to do is position the LED strip lights. I'm going to put two banks in so that this will be illuminated when the doors are closed. Here's my power supply. I just stub the strips right into this DC current right here, and which is hooked into an AC supply line. And then this is going to be the on-off switch. Just clicks in. This is all Hafla LED lighting. So on and off. And these get screwed in place after I get it finished. So don't be surprised when you see those on at the end of the show. And to that end, I need to drill a hole hidden in the top of the case, well behind what will become the broken arch pediment. So I'll drill that hole. And then from there, I put the plywood back panel on. And I drill and countersink the holes for that. And I screw that panel on to the maple sides left and right. And that makes it rock solid. The back is screwed on now, and this case is rock solid. And I've secured this to the bench so it couldn't tip forward. And this is a shelf pin jig. And what you do is it has a fence here and an indexing pin. And I start it off on the very bottom. This is a quarter inch bit with a stop collar. I drill that hole and that will eventually accept the shelf bracket. The wood sets right on there, or glass. But to continue the series of pins, see how that pin goes through? I slide it into the previously drilled hole. And in this case, I want it up every four holes. And boy, that hard maple. Hard stuff. And then so on. And you could go all the way to the stars with this jig, just like that. And then what I can do, pull that out, take that off, swing it around, do the same on the back. This is one handy tool. So once I get all the holes drilled for the shelves, I can then use the no mortise bronze hinges here. And you simply lay those on the outside edge of the door frame, screw them in place and then fasten those hinges to the maple sides left and right of the cabinet. And boy, that's a beautiful way to wrap this up. On to finishing.
To save time, I spent a couple hours sanding this down, first with a six inch random orbital sander with dust extraction, phenomenal. And then I used a triangular shaped finished sander working with the grain and into the corners. And I dusted it all off, tacked it off, and this is Danish oil on flame figure walnut right there. And what I'm doing using Danish oil on the maple, on the walnut, is letting it soak in. I'll get three good coats on this, let it dry, and get rid of the rags that you buff it out with outside because that can spontaneously combust. So I'll get this all finished up and let this cure out and we'll go over and work on the final top treatment, the broken arch pediment and finial. The finishing touch on this beautiful cabinet is the top treatment with a finial and a broken arch pediment. And to that end, this is a flexible curve that gives you that beautiful sigma curve of the top. And then that's my pattern that I traced out. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse, but believe me, this is worth doing. Okay, so I'll cut this out. And oh, by the way, the first part of the sculpting was done at the bandsaw. I took my time. I used a half inch blade for this large, continuous, sweeping, sweeping curve. And from there, once I had the bandsaw work done, this is too tight and too large to work, so it's onto a good jigsaw with dust collection built right in. Get it stable, make those cuts. I'm using a special smooth cutting blade for wood and it's nice and long. It gives me a two inch depth of cut and I'm taking my time and I'm leaving the black permanent marker line so I can sand down to that to make it balance left and right and I just follow the curve. Well, there's how it shapes up so far and we'll do turning in a bit, but now I'll just use a series of sanders including this benchtop oscillator to make sure that everything is smooth on the inside and the out. And then I also use an 80 grit abrasive belt sander to smooth this down and then hand scrapers. So that's how I shape it up. It's all good. Now in no time at all, this is how that broken arch pediment comes together. This is the back. It's been finished. I have five pocket holes with two inch screws in the back here. And you can see that is beautiful. Some tiger figured maple, hard to beat. Now I'll close the cabinet door. It's got a latch here that hooks into the shelf. That locks it in place. And see this? I'll hit the switch and the lights come on and then antique fastener there really brings that together. So I love the cabinet. Now I'll just join this to the top and this has a natural edge piece of hard maple here. I love that natural effect. I'll screw this in place and then from there it's on to turning. <laughs> I'm going to turn a finial, a lot like that one right there, out of this chunk of walnut that's 11 inches long and almost 4 inches square. And here's what I'm going to use right here. I have four chisels. Now I use this, it's called the rougher, and that square edge. And what I do is I take that cutting edge right in at center line and with the chisel level to the ground, and I knock off the corners and turn it into a cylinder. Once I have it into a cylinder, I turn it off, mark the lines where there are major transitions in diameter of the finial, and then I can turn the workpiece on and use the parting tool and calipers to get the diameters of those key dimensions right using the parting tool first, and then I go to the detailer, which is a diamond-shaped chisel, and I can start to sculpt in the form, and then I can use a round chisel to smooth out the profile. And I can create any desired finial this exact way. There I need to do a bit of sanding with the tool rest off, and once it's smooth, I can friction on a good uh, Danish oil finish here. And that's how you create the finial. All right, I'm using a Japanese razor saw 
to cut that ten and clear, and I have the judge with me now. <laughs> and let's see if that's going to fit. Oh, it's going to be tight. Oh, that's good. Don't want to force it. But there we have it. Well, what do you think, Susie? I love it. I love it. And the stained glass really pops. It's just a very beautiful, unique piece. Where will it go? In the living room. Oh, now that's a success <laughs> story. Now, what's up next week? Next week, it's segmented lidded boxes. Stay tuned. Okay. I'm glad you like it. I love it. Yeah, flame finial out of walnut with a contrasting maple. There you have it. Woodcraft since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Woodshop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook.